Okay, this is my first video. I uh, just want to give you a quick run through how you can speed up your computer. I've seen in the past where a lot of people's computer has slowed down, performance has just gone way downhill, and it's just almost gotten to the point where it's just unbearable and it just you get frustrated you don't even want to be on it and you've got things to do but you just get so frustrated you just give up on it <clears throat> well a couple of things you can do is one remove a lot of the startup programs uh, that you have uh, running in your background that's taking up memory and using your processor and whenever you install something it's usually a lot of different programs are, are going to put themselves in that startup folder and when you start up your operating system, start up your computer, it's going to start these programs <clears throat> even though you're not ready to use them yet. You know, the way I see it is don't start up the program unless I'm ready to use it. There ain't no sense in it running in the background and taking up a lot of your space or taking up a lot of your memory and using up your processor. So once you go to start, click on run. You can go in here and type in msconfig and then just hit OK. And what you're going to look for is the startup tab. Now in the startup tab, you're going to see everything that is checked in here is what actually starts up and runs in your background. Uh, now for just a basic user that just gets online, is just surfing the internet, checking emails and stuff like that, you're not going to have a lot of these processes running in the background. You're not going to have very many important processes that need to be running in the background. You might have a few that are actually you know, going to be running back there in the background but none of them are really going to be too important for what you're going to do unless it's like your uh, security software, antivirus, things like that. So what you can do is you can go through here and just take a look at some of these. If you recognize some of them, you say, oh, okay, yeah, I don't need that. Especially like Adobe Reader. I know so Adobe Reader's on a lot of them. You don't need that. You can uncheck it. Now, if you didn't know what something was, like the NVCPL, you can just go to Google Google that and it will bring it up. And actually, I'll show you here. Let's see. We'll go to create a new tab. And in Google, just type in NVCPL and it'll pull it up. And you can get, get a description of what this actually is and what this means by just taking a, a quick glance at you know some of these here. Usually, in the first few um, search results, you're going to find out what it is. Alright, now if you take a look at, uh, where's it at? Right here, it's, it's mvcpl.exe is an NVIDIA display driver. And, you know, basically you're just going to find out what it is, you know, and once you find out what it is, you should be able to find out if it's important to you or not. If you're not sure, uh, leave it alone or you can actually go in here. A process library is a good one to use. But anyways, you can go in here it says it's not a critical component but see the information above before disabling it so basically you can find out if something is important if it needs to be running even if you're not educated on what it is you can usually do a google search and find out what it is and you know find out for yourself and another thing to note <clears throat> anything that you disable from here is not critical uh, if you disable something and restart your computer uh, you don't have to worry about your computer not booting back up because these are only programs that are starting up not services like what's in here now if you disable something in here you're going to affect other parts of your system um, possibly keep it from booting back up uh, could even you know keep it from getting you know yourself getting online um, but yeah you're not going to do anything that's going to destroy your computer you can always come back and make changes um, you know just you know come back in and just uncheck or recheck whatever you need to do but once you're done and make that change all you have to do is just hit OK and this is going to ask you to restart your computer or you can exit without restarting and, you know if you're not in the middle of something and, and you want to go ahead and restart it just go ahead and restart it and when you boot back up into the desk into Windows and you get back to the desktop um, a, another dialog box is going to pop up and basically it's just going to tell you this uh, you know change has been made to your system uh, and then you're going to see another checkbox you're going to want to check at just say don't show me this message anymore blah 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 or you can just hit you know go exit without restarting and just let it do it later a uh, couple more things that you can do uh, that are real critical is have 
an antivirus on your computer that is completely up to date and that's the biggest thing is making sure that that antivirus is up to date that's one of the biggest reasons why people get viruses and things on their computer uh, is because they're not up to date with the latest definitions to search for the newest antiviruses, spyware, malware, stuff like that. So what you you know, I'm gonna recommend AVG uh, is a really good one. Even the free version, you don't even have to get the pay, the full paid version. Uh, the free version works just as well. Uh, another one is Bitdefender, is a very good one. Uh, Node 32, no open doors. Node 32 is also a good one. Uh, I think the interface is probably just maybe a little more advanced for some of the uh, less technical people. But I would really recommend Bitdefender and AVG. Another good one to have also is Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes is going to detect malware, which is detected completely different than the way viruses and spyware and adware is detected. <clears throat> malware is also referred to as scareware and if you've been infected before with a program that looks like it's an antivirus and it scans your computer and it's telling you it's got all these infections and it, uh, also it's going to ask you, you know, if you want to remove these infections you have to pay me $49.95 or something like that which is completely false. It's just trying to get you to pay them for something that's completely bogus. Uh, don't fall for that. If you do, or if you have, call your bank, cancel the payment, and you know, you know, do whatever. Take the necessary steps that you have to to deal with that. Um, it's it's a real nuisance. But anyways, it's detected different. So malware bytes is going to be your best chance to remove something like that. And there are some other ones out there, but malware bytes has always worked for me. I've used that several on several computers um, at my job and it's it's it does a really good job but the thing is the main thing is is having this on your system beforehand will help out greatly if you have this installed on your computer before you get infected your chances of removing something like this is going to be a lot better because sometimes you can get infected and you go to try to download this and install it uh, these viruses and malware and you know all, all these different infections are going to probably block this installation and I've seen this happen on several computers um, but what you can do is you can go to let's see we'll bring it up we'll go to download.com basically you go to download.com and to get these software I mean I recommend this this site for you know any kind of software you're looking for I would check here first you can find usually free trials or something. You you can find out if you like it before you buy it. Uh, you can even find you know free alternatives, freeware. Like there's alternatives for Microsoft Office. If you can't afford Microsoft Office, price is usually around two three hundred dollars. There's Open Office. You can do a search here and you can find just many free alternatives for things. And I highly recommend this site. Um, but yeah, you go to download.com and you can find AVG is right here under the most popular downloads with a million and a half downloads. You can go here, <clears throat> you can download your AVG and also get malware bytes. And there's one thing I want to show you real quick to make a note of. It's pretty deceiving and I hate the way that they put these advertisements here. But the first thing you're going to see is this download button right here. And this is not the one that's going to download AVG. Now, for a lot of inexperienced users, they will fall for this, and that's why they put these at the top of the page. It's the first place that you're going to be looking. And you see here it says Add Feedback. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but yeah, don't fall for any of these ads. Start download. It looks like it's what you need to click on to download the software that you're, look, that you're wanting to download. But look, if you look over here, you got download now shows you the size of the file shows you this you know tested spyware free and they have a little article about you know the the software itself and usually they have like a little video or screenshots or something like that um, but yeah go there download it make sure it's up to date um, you know like I said AVG Bitdefender one of those is your main antivirus and then on top of that also get malware bytes uh, if you do that, you'll be saving yourself a lot of time, possibly a lot of money, and you'll have a lot less frustrations. But that's just some of the ways that you can speed up <clears throat> speed up your operating system. 
Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can just leave comments in the video under the video, <clears throat> or you can visit my blog at ronjr.wordpress.com.